Hello there everybody, Peter of England here bringing you another update um, on recent incidents and things that are happening with Weirbank. Now I am sure many of you are aware that it's the summer season and in the summer season the trolls and the shills and all the re reports of what's happening to Weirbank, what's happening to me, uh, are flying around the internet and all sorts of rumours are coming uh, on the chat rooms and into the forums. Well, I'd just like to tell you that none of it's true uh, if it's saying anything derogatory or if it's saying anything about impeding the progress of Weirbank and re-movement. We march on, we get stronger. At the moment, um, many, many people are starting to come on from the United States. Many are coming on from uh, Ireland. Many are coming on from Europe. So we're getting stronger by the day, not weaker. Now, the reason for the, uh, this broadcast today is to try and address some of the, uh, the questions that are being asked of me continuously on the hotline, which is still current and still up and running, contrary to what rumours have been saying. Um, and what I want to try and cover is some of the, the rebuttals, some of these nonsense statements that have been made by the banks over uh, either the telephone to customers or, in fact, in other instances by, by mail. So, let's try and run through some of the rebuttals. Now, one of the main things that they're saying is that we're bank is not recognized by the FCA. That's the Financial Compliance Authority. Well, the Financial Compliance Authority has successfully seen over some of the most interesting debacles and most criminal activity in the history of financial and commercial activity in the UK. So, we are no, no, made no effort to register with them because serves absolutely no purpose. It's like registering with a mafia. Another one, we are not registered or recognized by the Bank of England. The Bank of England is only a private banking organization, just like the Federal Reserve, just like the Bank National de France. All of the, uh, the national banks of the world are in effect private. So we a bank is not asking for recognition from the Bank of England. In the Bills of Exchange Act and in all the financial uh, um, uh, legislation throughout the world, and particularly in the UK, for UK purposes, nowhere does it say that a bank needs to be recognised by the Bank of England. So these are spurious remarks. One of the things I do like to though mention here is for those who'd like to see what the definition of a bank is, because there are rumours circulating that we a bank is not a bank. Well, what is a bank? A bank is a natural right uh, a bank and financial um, commercial activity is the right of every individual and every group of individuals. So it's like saying that you're not a human being because you're not a Catholic or you're not a human being because you're not a member of the Islamic faith. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So if we want to look at the definition of a bank, go and look at what Lord Denning said in the Court of Appeal in a case called United Dominions Trust. There's a certain set of requirements that need to be fulfilled to find out whether you are a bank or not. And, as you will see, we a bank is doing all the things that constitute banking. Now, on that note, what you might also like to look at is um, the statutory definition, if you're wanting to look for statutory definition, or if you want to look for a definition in Black's Law Dictionary, you'll see that there are two types of banking. Those bankers who actually ask for statutory recognition and help and need to be recognised, but then there is another section, a sector called private banking, which doesn't resort to asking the government for any help or any input or any regulatory aspect whatsoever. And so, what you'll see is the Bank of England is such a bank, the Federal Reserve is such a bank, and we a bank is such a bank. There is no statutory governmental infrastructure or control required either on those two I've mentioned or on we bank. The next thing, we're not recognised or haven't registered with UK Clearing. All that UK Clearing is, as I've said repeatedly and repeatedly, is it a country club uh, membership game for the white shoe boys that operate on Wall Street and operate international banking cartels. It again serves no purpose with us registering with them. What is the point when we only have one bank and we only have one, the next thing, sort code? 
Our sort code is supposedly not recognized. Well, we only have one. Um, all that a sort code is, as I've said before, is a mechanism of identifying which particular bank the check needs to be cleared through. And as we only have one branch, it's not so difficult. Um, so when they're saying, for example, as Lloyds have said, and NatWest and Barclays and HSBC and Midshire's Building Society and Nationwide, that the sort code is not recognized, all that non-recognition means is not, not known on first observation or appearance. So when you look again, that's when it is recognized. So I would advise them to look again and the sort code this time would be recognized. The next point um, is that uh, we're bank has no money and therefore isn't a bank. Well, firstly, they have no idea what we have in assets as money, but over and above all of that, if you go and look at the Bank of England's monetary reform document or monetary overview, uh, Q1, that's quarter one, 2014, it quite succinctly states how money comes into creation. So if we don't have any money, then neither does the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England or any of the parasitic banks that uh, nest under that old whore on Threadneedle Street there in the city. Okay, the next point is that we are conducting some type of fraudulent activity. I've gone into this in great detail before. Look up at the definition of fraud. Fraud invariably means passing something off in the appearance of that which it is not with a intention of either causing loss to someone or causing gain at someone else's expense. And if you look at what fraudulent activity is, you will see that we are bank fulfills none of those requirements because we are open, we are transparent, and we're not dressing up a check under the name of National Worstminster or trying to change any of the, um, the logos or the, the uh, writing or the mechanism for presentation or getting involved with subterfuge and anything like that. The next one is, it's a scam. So what's the definition of a scam? Scam is usually offering something in return for nothing. A scam is usually very, very short-lived and is invariably, it is impossible for anyone to find out where the scamsters reside or where they operate from. This cannot be said with Weabang. We have a stated working uh, operational address in the UK. We have a telephone number. People know where I am and I'm putting videos out all the time and it's not within the realms of possibility that I could be found located and spoken with within an hour by anybody in the UK who so wishes to do. So I think that puts that one to sleep. The next thing is what I'm also saying to people out there when they look at this video and uh, use the document that is out there called um, the, uh, Rebuttal of Banking Arguments uh, contrary, uh, Against Weabank is that if they're in the business of wanting money, and money is their business, then why won't they accept our money, which is your money, presented through the mechan mechanism of a promissory note? And what that in effect amounts to is financial apartheid. Their money is good, our money is not good. So we're becoming the, the black man on the block, so to speak, uh, where our money is deemed not to be good enough. The next part is, all of the above that I mentioned and covered in the last, say, six or eight minutes is a claim. These low-level banking officials, these people who are returning your checks, these people who are working for the utility companies and saying that we're not recognized, the sort code, the UK clearing, the, we have no money, we use a false currency, those are all claims. And all those claims are defamatory in nature. Not only are they that, but if they weren't, then these individuals must, as personal entities, back them up with fact. If they can't do that, then they're in this classic Headley Burn and Heller situation of what's called negligent misrepresentation, especially when they're in a situation where they're holding themselves out as being so-called experts or having, uh, should we say, expert knowledge in the areas in which they conduct their activity, which is particularly the case in banking and commerce. So 
this is what you need to be doing. You need to be putting these people on the spot, pinning them down, and asking them to substantiate the claims that they make in preparation for them entering into a court of law and swearing under full commercial liability on penalty of perjury that the statements that they are making are true. And if they don't know that they're true, then that's a problem for them. Yeah? They shouldn't be standing up and spouting off saying things unless they are factual and they're correct and they can be proved. And if they can't, then we are going to come after those individuals, we're going to come after the magistrates, we're going to come after the judges and the bailiffs and the high court enforcement officers and even the police if they're enforcing this against you and we will attach commercial liens against them and when we are rolling out removement then the next set of implications that are going to attach to these people will be made very full, very apparent and very clear. As a final note for our, uh, our customers and clients and members that are coming on from the United States and Germany and uh, many of the Commonwealth countries, we'd just like to say now that we have a special clearing code that will be attached for your check so the banks can actually render that check into their account and what in effect it has meant now that every Weir Bank check that goes out, every single one is deemed to be a certified check. So if you want to look up the implications of a certified check or banker's check, then please do so. Go along and look it up and they are as good as cash. In effect, money in the hands of the payee or in the, uh, the, the payee's bank. And also it might be very interesting to also know that with the checks not being returned to many of you, what the banks are doing, what the financial organizations are doing are in cashing them or is in cashing them in the background because they're not account payee only. We very, very carefully ensured that we left quite sufficient um, bait on the line when we decided to put the, the checks in, in as they are now. So, as you see, the checks are crossed, but they're not account payee. Look at the implications of that. Thank you for listening. Peter of uh, England here signing off. New videos are coming soon. Thank you.